So Danny Flexen and Joe Lee here for Seconds Out. Something new we're pioneering. We hope it's going to be a continuing series. Um, we called it Boxed In. And it's a way of dividing different divisions in boxing um, into relevant categories. So in this case, um, we're going with the lightweight division, one of the most exciting weight classes in boxing right now. And we're splitting them into current champions, serious contenders, young guns, and also rands, which may upset a few people, depending on how many end up in that particular category. What, what do you think of this concept, Joe? Are you on board? Yeah, I mean, it's quite a popular thing at the moment. I think it's good to sort of separate and also talk about it because it's interesting to see where different people are at. We might also give some people, you know, some ideas and fighters who they might not have heard of before. And uh, we'll, of course, do this with most of the weight divisions in the coming weeks. And so I'm excited. You sound excited. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, mean, I just... I mean, we've got six, six fighters each to rank. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to age before beauty, so I'm going to let you so go I'll first. Go. Yeah, okay. Um, no, it's a stacked division, but um, who else to start with? Who better to start with than Lomachenko? The king, the kingpin of the division right now. The te Technically, he's fantastic, and he's obviously going in the world champion category. There's no doubt about that. If he does get undisputed, he's going to be moving possibly back down again to 130, so... He's going to be vacating after he's undisputed. Um, so that's obviously going to impact the other decisions. But I think there's, there's not much to talk about other than he is a world champ. And uh, he's a lightweight king right now. No one can stop him. In the Luke Campbell fight, he controlled it well. Of course, Campbell was in it throughout, but he just picked him apart. And uh, yeah, there's nothing, nothing much to say. He's the obviously king. a bit of contention over whether beating Lopez will actually make him undisputed or not. Oh yeah, I think we can all agree he well, would he... be clearly the number one in the division, regardless. But because of the WBC's weirdness, making him the it's... franchise champion, I'm still not sure really what that means. No one is, and it's frustrating as a boxing fan. You just want to, you just want to have an outright champion sometimes. So it's it's annoying that that's happened. But I believe he will. Do you think he'll go on to fight Haney if he if he beats Lopez, or do you think he'll just go no, straight I down? Think, I think he'll move down. I don't think Haney is annoying a because... yet that it's going to be worth the risk. But yeah, for I the mean... legacy, it's it's it'd be amazing if he could get that undisputed. But yeah, it just. With the, the different organisations, it's so hard to make these undisputed fights, which is... Yeah, it is the point great. of being franchise champion that he doesn't have to fight like the world champion anyway. He can mm. avoid mandatory obligations. Yeah, yeah. Either that or he's going to be like, you know, a, a normal franchise and we'll get a Lomachenko popping up in every corner of the globe. <laughs> which I'd quite like, you know. That'd Lomachenko, be interesting, Lomachenko, London, yeah. that'd be all right. I want, to, I want to see him in London again. I didn't get the chance last time, but uh, he loves it. He loves it here, so that'd be great. Well, he won one of his Olympic golds here, didn't he? And obviously beat Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Happy yeah. days for him. All right, well, my first one, as you've had uh, Lomachenko, obviously going into the current champions category. Joining him there uh, will be Teofimo Lopez, yeah. um, who I had the pleasure of interviewing a few weeks ago, the IBF champion. Yeah. Um, a lot of people doubting him. He had a performance, I think it was two fights ago, um, where he was fighting a tall uh, Japanese fighter, was it yeah, Nakatani? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. He kind of um, struggled a little bit, laboured, a um, bit awkward. His timing wasn't quite there, probably because at least partly the dimension of his opponent wasn't really what he was used to. Um, and then he came back with that world title challenge. A lot of people fancied the champion Richard Comey to retain. And Lopez just blasted him away with a mixture yeah. of ferocity and flair. And just really, in one night, kind of fulfilled the potential that so many people had seen in him for so long. Yeah. Still very young. Um, I think you'd be crazy not to make Lomachenko the favourite in their fight when it eventually happens. But even saying that, I give him a live chance, probably better chance than anyone in recent times that's fought Lomachenko. Um, he's going to have natural size on him. He's got speed of his own. He's young. He's hungry, mm -hmm. and he's a big puncher. And I think he could really, he could really challenge Lomachenko. So he obviously goes into the current champions category. But he's a, he's a talent. I'm really excited about outside the ring as well. He's got so much charisma and yeah, he's so he's, animated and he really just clearly loves what he's doing. Yeah, he knows how to sell a fight and I think his mentality is incredible for such a young age. Listening to him, you know, on socials, podcasts and whatnot, he, he's got his head screwed on and he's not here to 
take part. He's here to make legacy fights, make big money, and, he's and to he's, take over. He's not here to take part. He's here to take over. It's the old saying, but you re- when you when you listen to him, you really do believe that. And I think he's going to be, if not undisputed at lightweight, he'll move up eventually. And and I can see him being a real force for the next you know five ten years. Good stuff. Who, who's next for you, and where are they going? Next up, I'm going Kami. Uh, obviously, come off a loss to Lopez. But I believe he's still in that bracket of serious contenders. And now, uh, not, although a lot of people will say he, he got absolutely bad in that fight, but he he wasn't like willing to like take a break and think, oh, I'll, I'll fight a few lower level opponents and then come back up to the top. He's re- he's willing to get straight back in there. And of course, coronavirus happened, so he can't get in there straight away and he's not going to go straight to the title. But I think a lot of people counted him out because of how early it happened but it just it just wasn't his night and you know he could switch off anyone's lights in the division he showed that plenty of times so I think it's just about waiting for his time and and like I say the lightweight division isn't one where people stay there for a while Loma's going to be moving soon Javante Davis isn't is fighting super featherweight uh, Tia Fumos Lopez has spoke, spoken about moving up, so there's going to be vacant belts in the next few years, and I think he's he's going to be ready to snatch them up. Yeah, I, I can't disagree with that. So he's going in the serious contenders category, yeah. and yeah. I'm going to give him some company mm-hmm. and okay. stick Hole's finest. No offense yeah. to Tommy Coyle, <laughs> Luke Campbell in there, mm-hmm. um, Olympic gold medalist, of course. I think he's got something named after him in Hole as well. It's not. Has it? It's not a post box, is it? I think that might nah, be um, Well, he won the Olympics, so it could be, but I believe... Um, Someone's got a golden post box. Maybe it is him. In Hull. Well, no, I don't know. If it was Hull, it's definitely him, but I'm not sure. I just remember oh, no. one of the Olympics. Oh, no, Lopez. Got a golden oh, Olympics. Uh, AJ obviously did. Mo Farah did. I don't, I don't know about Luke Campbell, though, no. Yeah, I've just gone off on a tangent anyway. It's not completely irrelevant to what we're doing. But yeah, yeah, Luke Campbell, I can't put him in the also-rans category, at least partly because yeah. I spoke to him this morning. He'd be really offended. <laughs> but no, aside from that, he's um, he's had two world title shots. And I said this to him directly earlier, that he's been incredibly unlucky that his two world title shots have come against arguably two of the best lightweights of his generation yeah. in Lomachenko and Jorge Linares. And he pushed Linares all the way and very nearly won that fight on away soil. Lomachenko, as you pointed out earlier, Campbell was always in that fight, just didn't you know, have quite enough to to get the victory. And Lomachenko is a pound for pound top three fighter. Yeah. So no disgrace to Campbell there. He's also very unlucky with how he's been treated by the WBC. And I'm not sure if it's really their fault or we can blame coronavirus or whatever, but he was due to fight for the vacant world title when champion Devin Haney was made um, title holder in recess because he yeah. was injured. Mm-hmm. Now coronavirus happened. Campbell's vacant title fight never occurred, yeah. and uh, Haney's recovered, so he's got his belt back. And it leaves Campbell maybe out in the cold. I don't know. So he may still fight the same fight, but maybe it becomes an interim title fight or a final yeah. eliminator, something like that. But he's still incredibly talented. Seems to have a new lease of life mm-hmm. under trainer Shane McGuigan, and very very talented. Maybe the most you know one of, if not the most talented. British boxer around there's no question about that and it's clear to see the fire still burning inside of him and he's gonna come back all right four down yeah. eight to go next up I've got Ryan Garcia this is not I'm not gonna put him in the contender yet just because of you know his resume hasn't fought anyone of serious note really of course he's a young gun and He's looking phenomenal at the moment, knocking out guys left, right and centre. First round victory uh, KO against Francisco Fonseca. And he's starting to, well, he's becoming a massive name already. But of course, in terms of the tier, I just believe he needs to sort of get that fringe opponent. I'm not sure. Maybe like a, a Cambosis, like a level where it's a bit more respected than... You know, some of these guys have been bit, possibly even higher than that because he's he's absolutely dominating the division at the moment at the level he's at. He's just won his first, well, the silver belt uh, with the WBC. And I think he's, in the next couple of years, he's going to come on strong. He said he doesn't want to fight Haney till 21. So, of course, we can't put him in a contender level yet. But, you know, he's going to be, once he fights these higher level, he's he's going to prove that he's he really belongs there. And I, I think he will. 
Well, of course, he was supposed to be fighting Jorge Linares. That fight was all but yeah. Um, the, I should, now, I did mention, I should mention. yeah, now yeah. with um, coronavirus, it looks mm-hmm. like they might be taking fights in the in the interim. Yeah, I think that fight would be very interesting. Um, yeah. I don't know. I saying that I don't know if he would. I don't know if he's at that level yet because, of course, Linares has had a few losses recently, but well, in in the last few years. But I just think Garcia maybe needs one more just below that level, and then you know, possibly like an Alar- a Linares type fight. Well, there's only one category in our four tiers that hasn't been filled yet, and I'm sorry, <laughs> Yuri Orkis Gamboa. Yeah, but. That's where you're going, son. And son is ironic, <laughs> given that he's 38 years old, which is virtually yeah. ancient for anyone in the lighter weight categories. Um, he won, obviously, an Olympic gold medal, maybe two, actually. I think he might have won back-to-back Olympic gold medals. I'd have to check that. But he's, in his prime, even as a pro, he was an incredibly exciting fighter. Yeah. Um, the Lopez fight down at featherweight was left to marinate too long, and, and Lopez lost, and obviously that fight never took place. Gamboa, still a big puncher and still fast, but up at lightweight, his, his shots don't carry quite the same strength that they did down there. And I think we saw against Javante Davis, who, you know, is planning to drop back down to featherweight for his next fight. Mm-hmm. That even against, you know, a, a real strong young gun who hasn't proved himself as one of the best lightweights in the world just yet, Gamboa just couldn't really compete with him. It took Davis a long time to get rid of him, but I think we saw enough from that. And in some of Gamboa's recent performances to say, he's probably not going to win a world lightweight title amongst this current crop. No, I couldn't agree more. I mean, in the Davis fight, he got knocked down a few times. He was getting picked apart slowly. You know, Davis was quite, he was a bit, a little bit reserved. He wasn't like overshooting a lot, but I I don't think he's going to be a world champion anytime soon. Agreed. All right. So next up, I've got, uh, ferocious Cambos. I think he's scheduled to fight Lee Shelby as well. That'll be a very telling fight for his career. He's he's a good hit and not get hit style type of fighter. He's very defensive, but he's he understands the sweet science of the sport and he can he can really pick out people's weaknesses and and work on them. I think that's his best ability. And you know, trains ferociously as his name is in the gym. He, he's a constant worker, and I think he's he's um. His hard work's coming, you know, 18 and 0. He's still got that zero. And I think if he beats Lee Selby, he could certainly be a contender very soon. I'll put him in the young guns for now. He's up and coming in terms of his boxing. Yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah, um, yeah well, my next one actually is Lee Selby. Yeah. Um, but I'm putting him in the contender category. That Cambo, he's obviously a former world champion for a start down at mm-hmm. Featherweight. He's not young, so I'm not going to call him a young gun, but. He's a he's a he's a you know veteran. I don't know why I suddenly developed a stutter there on the word veteran, yeah. but very good fighter, very slick. Obviously, weight drained down at featherweight, but still no disgrace in going the distance with Josh Warrington um, in losing his title, and he reigned yeah. there for a while. And since then, he's had two fights: one against a tough American who he managed to get past, and then against Ricky Burns in a fight which I thought he won relatively clearly, despite the the tight scorecards. Yeah, and. I don't know if he's going to win a world title. The Cambosos fight is a final eliminator for the IBF, mm-hmm. which will be held presumably by either Lomachenko or Lopez. And it's hard to see uh, Selby beating either of those guys. But it's also hard to count him out. He's, he's very natural. Well, not, no one's naturally talented, but he is very talented. He's got a lot of ability. Um, he's just a, you know good at everything. Yeah. Real good boxing brain as well. And determination. He trains very hard. He doesn't live an extravagant lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think he should be included in serious contenders. We, we're not saying he's definitely going to win a world title, but he'll certainly challenge for one if he beats Cambosos, which I fancy him to do. Yeah, that's going to be a cracking fight. And whoever comes out victorious in that, I think they're going to be looking at one of the belts very soon. Um, and it, it, it all is about whether Loma stays and he'll probably go down but it's all about what happens there because if not then there's going to be a few vacant belts and a lot of people that we're discussing now could be in with more well, of a chance to get the division the if Loma beats Lopez isn't it because then he just he, he, he goes off the and then he he split and everyone gets opportunity I mean it's not yeah, good for the division exactly. for the fans but it's good for the yeah. fighters mm-hmm. no I agree I couldn't agree more mate so for me next up we've got Javier Fortuna to say yeah and I think I'm gonna I'm gonna put him in the contenders because 
his last loss to Robert Easter was it was a controversial loss, but it was he used his but dirty boxing quite a lot. He's good inside fighting, but I just believe that fight for me he should have come out with a victory because you know I can't see him beating the likes of. If Javante Davis comes back up, I can't see him beating the likes of him. He's a two-time world champion, of course, at other weight divisions. But I think his time is, you know, his time isn't right now. I think with how stacked the division's looking, I just can't see him winning one anytime soon. But certainly, if the belts do vacate, as we keep saying, I think he could be a contender then. I think you're being very kind. <laughs> do you? Yeah, I think I'd have put him in the also runs. I don't see him winning a world title, even if the belts are fragmented. I think there's too much talent in the division and yeah. people at the earlier stages of their career as well, whereas he's had a few wars and he's mm-hmm. he's been beaten up a few times, you know, even in fights that he's won. Yeah. So I think his time's gone, but you're a nicer person than me and I know you don't want to put people in the also rank out. No, you've you've got me there. <laughs> um, next for me is someone who has to go in the current champions, although this will cause a bit of consternation, that's Devin Haney. And no disrespect to him, he's incredibly talented, unbeaten, yeah. young guy with the zone, mm-hmm. obviously, Eddie Hearn, Metro yeah. USA. Um, but there's no getting past the fact that he didn't beat Lomachenko um, for the WBC title that he holds. And through no fault of his own, he was actively ch- pursuing that fight. But Lomachenko, obviously, with no disrespect to Haney again, had bigger fish to fry, I guess. Um, and then Haney became champion in recess. Another great WBC decision up there with franchise champion Lomachenko. Mm-hmm. And he was injured at the time. Coronavirus hit. The vacant title fight that was due to happen didn't. Yeah. And then he recovered, obviously, as people do, and got the belt back. So a lot of people are now criticising him for being a two-weight world champion, having not deposed the world champion. Which I can kind of see it, but it's not his fault. It's, it's boxing politics at their worst, unfortunately. and. Mm-hmm. You know, no one wants to win a world title by email, as as kind of Lopez has taken great pleasure in uh, mocking Haney for. But you've got to think that he, at his age and having the attitude that he has and the desire, his time will come. And although the world title fight should be the hardest fight of your career, I think defending that belt, he will he will find some tough tests out there. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's it's unfortunate the way it's come about the two time. I don't think he will truly believe he's at two time because he he's beaten he's he's had one world title fight and and the other one is just been given to him because it got vacated. So it's it's not he's not a real two time champion, but no one can deny he's he's a serious contender if not and and he's got the belt, so you can't you can't not give it to him. But in terms of where he goes next, I think a fight with. Well, I don't think the Tiafimo Lopez fight will happen. I, I do still think he'll fight Loma, but just a fight of a great magnitude. And he, he needs to step up now because he hasn't actually fought anyone of serious note yet. So I think if he starts doing that, then he can seriously consider himself a real champion then. Yeah, well, maybe he'll meet the winner of Campbell against um, Fortuna yeah, exactly, if it still yeah. happens. And, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so next for you. Next up and last for me is um, Yvan Mendy. Now, if I if I don't put this him in also round category, I think I'll get a bit of a stick from you now, Danny. <laughs> now he's he's obviously on a four fight win streak. He's he's got that great win against uh, Luke Campbell about six years ago now, which is obviously a long time ago. But I think his his mental strength and his ability to counter really well across his career has, has, has served him well. But I just don't think now is his time. He's, he's not very high up in the rankings at the moment and, and he's not looking to get, you know, even if he gets a big fight, I don't think he can get through that anymore. I think his time sort of the other side of him. Um, and I think he's looking back on a great career, but I just can't see him coming anywhere near a world championship, a world, world title win anytime soon. Well, it stops Gamboa getting lonely in that also <laughs> at the start. But yeah, yeah, I agree with you. I think Campbell in avenging the Mendy defeat kind of yeah, laid yeah. a blueprint for people on how to kind of disarm Mendy. Mm-hmm. You know, he outboxed him from range. He kept offsetting him by changing his direction and stuff. Exactly what he didn't do in the first fight. But that yeah. proves, you know, in the second fight, you've got to switch it up. Mendy didn't. And, you know, it proves Campbell coming out on top. And overall, he's, he's the better fighter now. And... And then, of course, but I think the, around the, the first fight, well, before the second, that was his best stage of career. And I, I, I just can't see him getting close anytime soon. So my final one, or the final one overall as well, was the toughest one for me to categorise. It's it, going to be interesting. Linares, yeah. Mm-hmm. 
three weight world champion. His flaws are well known. You know, he, he can be hit, he can be hurt, um, but he's got plenty of flair, plenty of heart, speed, technically excellent fighter. Gave Loma all he could handle before succumbing mm. to that stoppage from the body shot. Um, yeah, very, very difficult, but I think I've just about put him in serious contenders still. Because I think I kind of fancy him to beat Ryan Garcia if they fight next. Yeah. No, I agree. If Ryan Garcia is, you know, a young gun or a serious contender, then I think we have to say Linares is up there still. He beat, um, he stopped Carlos Morales in like four rounds in his mm-hmm. last fight, which was a bit of a redemptive performance after his ill-advised move up to super lightweight, getting chinned by Pablo Cesar Cano, really. <laughs> I just think, you know, Garcia hasn't been in a war yet and... and... With Linares, he's experienced, he's been through it all. And with the character Garcia is, you, you, I feel like you need something to go into a fight with Linares because of how much experience he's got and what level he's at compared to, you know, a, a fight at a lower level than Linares. I don't think it's the right move for Garcia, but if, if it does happen, I, I agree with you. Linares, I think, would come out with the dub. I think Linares like, grows into fights as well. I think couple of times when he's lost, he's been wiped out early. There was one yeah. in Mexico, I think, earlier in his career. And obviously the, the recent one with Cano or Cano as well. Um, he grows into a fight. He gets more confident as the fight goes mm-hmm. on. And then it becomes a real war of attrition. I think you're right. I think Garcia hasn't experienced that. And a lot of the young fighters in the division haven't. I think Linares, he won't want to become a gatekeeper. As I said, you exactly. know, he's a weight world champion. He reigned for a long time at lightweight as well. And only lost to one of the best pound pound fighters in the world today. I think exactly. Carlos Morales had never been stopped before. Renowned tough guy. Linares dissected him with precision. Um, yeah, he's still up there. He's still got a lot to offer, I think. Yeah, no, it's that that would be an interesting fight because of course, you know, no one knows Garcia until he's been at that level. So it could be a shock if it would be a shock if he wins, but you don't know until you find yourself at that the level. And of course he's been stopped early now, so Garcia is known for that. You never know, but I just I just think it's a little bit too soon. Well, that's a dirty dozen, all ranked and boxed <laughs> in. Um, we'd love to know what you guys think out there. So let us know in the comments below. Um, is there anyone you would have put in different categories and why? Really be great to know. And is there any lightweights we haven't listed in our 12 that you think are worth noting? Um, mm-hmm. That'd be good to know and, and why we should have ranked them when we didn't. Um, We'll be back hopefully next time with a new version of this on a different division. Um, But for now, we really appreciate your time. Till next time.